I'm just wondering if you could tell me um, if Cotter is going to apply for full parole, and if so, when? Um, and then a second question, if I may, um, what he's currently doing in prison to prove that he's not a threat to Canadians. He's not what? A threat to Canadians. <laughs> okay. Now, did you write those before you gave me those questions? I did, yes. Now, I have all respect in the world for you, and I'll answer both those questions, but normally I don't speak to somebody. Normally he doesn't speak to Sun News. That's Dennis Edney, one of Omar Carter's many lawyers. He was there yesterday at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, and you could hear the chuckling in the background when our own Ada Slavinsky dared to ask some very basic questions about Carter's dangerousness. Joining us now from Vancouver is Ada. Great to see you, Ada. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Ezra. So you just went to this event, and I thought your questions were very normal. You know, and, and and that's what I thought. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I wasn't asking anything that would be difficult or unreasonable to answer. There are a lot of Canadians who are legitimately wondering what's going to happen if this guy gets released. Yeah, and the chuckles in the room that were laughing at you that you would dare ask, dare treat Carter as what he is, a convicted, confessed, unrepentant Al Qaeda terrorist who do this day has not renounced the jihad. Well, they were, they were snickering and giggling at you as if loving such a Paul Bernardo character was normal. Here, can I play the next clip? This, this is in answer to, to your next question. You got some great footage that I know no other TV channels will show. Here, Adam, let's roll the next clip and then we'll talk about it. Ideologies. You read the letter to this lady. To write one single comment to me, that shows that Omar Khadr had ideological leanings. You can't. Wait a minute. He pled guilty. So. <laughs> 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 I, I heard what you said, and you make a very compelling point, but you have to understand, I, I have to ask the other side, and there are Canadians You've got to be kidding me. They tried to drown you out. They're saying, you got to be kidding, as if Omar Khadr is, uh, is ideological. That's the definition of terrorism versus a normal crime. Paul Bernardo, when he murdered those girls, it wasn't ideological. He was just a garden variety murderer. But Omar Khadr murdered because of a political belief system, jihad, al-Qaeda. How can, how can Dennis Edney, the lawyer, and that room even say with a straight face that a terrorist like him isn't motivated by a cause? And his argument to me was, oh, he wrote a really nice letter back to this lady and, and said in the letter, oh, God bless Canada and God bless you and your son. Well, that doesn't undo what he, he confessed to doing. He did plead guilty. And, and the lawyer's arguments yesterday were that he doesn't actually remember what happened and he was forced to confess. And, you know, we can have that conversation but I have to ask, on behalf of, of Canadians, that's my job, I have to ask the questions, what happens if this guy gets released? And, and is he a threat? And that's not a laughing matter yeah. at all. Well, they were giggling here. Let me put on the screen, Omer Fodder signed, they call it a stipulation of facts. Uh, you and I would call it a confession. You can see his signature there. It is page after page after page of details of how he met Al-Qaeda, how he joined Al-Qaeda, how he was trained in poisons, trained in bomb making, spying, and, and he came to Al-Qaeda through his father, who was also Al-Qaeda. For, for Dennis Edney to say that this man was maybe forced into a confession, we got the videotape. Here, here show on the screen as I'm talking, the video, this is Al-Qaeda home movies of Omar Khadr assembling improvised explosive devices, holding an assault rifle. Put, put the footage up there. I mean, how people can deny somehow that he's, that he's a, a terrorist is just unbelievable to me. The, those folks in that room were drinking Kool-Aid at it. Well, and that's just the thing. I mean, Edney criticized me for not thinking for myself, for having my questions prepared in advance, which I don't know in what world that's a bad thing. But regardless, I would argue that I was one of the few people in the room who actually was thinking for myself. Yeah. I mean, when I was setting up my camera, everyone was polite to me and, and moving out of my way and asking what I needed and this and that. And 
I don't know if they didn't know about Sun or didn't know about me or, or just were being polite because they didn't have any direction otherwise. But once Edney started criticizing me personally, there it was, it was like a flip of a switch. Their reaction totally changed. And on the way out, I was being shoved. My camera was being purposely knocked. And th th there's, there's no reason for that. But it, it's like they, they got their marching orders. And, and here they go. And, and this guy is against Sun. So we're going to be against Sun. And we're going to be against and, and bully Sun's reporters. That's and incredible. That's something that, that no one should have to put up with. Absolutely. I didn't know that they were physically abusive to you, pushing you and shoving you. And I met you, of course, when you used to work here in Toronto. You're, you're not a six foot, 595 pounder. I mean, you were a, a, a slight lady and a mom, by the way. And for them to push you and jostle you is some aggressive way of saying, how dare you cha challenge our narrative. Frankly, that's assault. I think we've got one more clip. Let's show it. At the present time, he's classified a year later as maximum security. And if he goes for parole, they won't let him out because you don't let maximum security people out. And as long as they maintain maximum security, he will never get the program that's necessary to get him out, which is part of the government strategy. And that's sort of interesting. That's the first time I heard any indication from Carter's lawyers that he will not be applying for parole. I, that, that's what I took that to mean. Now, that's, that doesn't mean Cotter won't do it. I mean, Dennis Edney is one of many lawyers, and he may or may not be speaking for Cotter. But that, that sounds like a little bit of news there, that there's no, not going to be a parole application. Is that what uh, you took from it? Yes, absolutely. And that, that wasn't information that he, he volunteered. I had to, to ask about that. So I don't know um, if that was something that he, he kind of answered on the fly, or, or if there, there had been a great deal of discussion with Cotter about it. He didn't let me ask any follow-up questions. Um, he told me afterwards that no more questions from you and huh. went straight to, to, to yeah, other his, members his favorite, of the audience. But. His favorite questions are, Mr. Adney, can you tell me how it feels to be so, so wonderful? That's the questions he likes from the media. Listen, Ada, we're out of time. Thanks for your good work, and I'm sorry that they roughed you up. You stay with it. You are on the hunt for truth. That's why... They hate you and that's why we love you.